So, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's begin with our uh, second session of decoding electrical vehicles in India. Uh, let me read with the last session that we did with uh, Mr. Sinde, uh, the uh, CEO and founder of uh, Google Foundation and uh, GoGoEvent.com. Uh, the recap is pretty, uh, you know, uh, we started uh, with evolution of electrical vehicles, the technical aspects of uh, how a typical, uh, you know, uh, conventional two-wheeler as in the cycle to two-wheeler and uh, a car, uh, you know, uh, in terms of components, in terms of how it's built, uh, we discuss on that front. Uh, and then, uh, we, uh, you know, Mr. Shinde also talked about uh, his, uh, and the venture and how it all began. Uh, the journey all together then he uh, switched on to the topic of uh, how gogo foundation is talking about incubation centers uh, in association with lots of colleges uh, where they they train and they do uh, you know a lot of uh, platform they give a lot of platform for uh, research and development activities for students students to take projects and uh, you know uh, if they want to venture out in electrical vehicle uh, industry altogether then it was uh, on the government schemes that uh, how government of india is taking uh, you know a larger initiative in terms of promoting um, green energy uh, in terms of electrical vehicles and uh, what are the different schemes that they are offering and how an individual can benefit uh, Individual can be an individual or a small uh, SME or, uh, you know, a, a company or organization who wants to diversify. Uh, then uh, we talk about case studies of light from fisheries to, let's say, uh, inverters, generators and, uh, you know, uh, farm. Uh, there is so much of things that uh, the farmers uh, do want uh, in terms of electrical tractors or anything in, the, in that sort. In terms of energy, we also discussed a, a typical Q&A session where uh, you know someone asked about uh, if they want to uh, incorporate, uh, let's say, windmills and how that component can be integrated with. And last uh, topic was discussed in terms of the EDNAC, which uh, they have some initiatives under Google Foundation, which you can always visit the site. So pretty much of the last session, uh, we move on to uh, you know today's discussion where we steer from. Uh, not only electrical vehicles uh, aspect, but also in terms of uh, how technology is, you know, a forefront in terms of uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, the uh, current situation which we are we all are in, uh, right from COVID nineteen, and uh, how the transportation would be going further, and of course uh, the pros and cons of uh, the current and past scenario. So we'll be discussing a lot of stuff uh, based on that. Uh, uh, just an introduction of uh, my uh, discussion would be uh, in the entire session, I would request the, uh, the participants and attendees to kindly note uh, any queries or concerns that they have uh, for our panelists and, uh, you know, they can, uh, you know, write those question answers, uh, questions uh, in our chat section. And after the section, uh, after the session, we would uh, compile them and, you know, try to answer all of them. So uh, we'd not be steering away from the session. So uh, uh, let's have the brief agenda for today. We'd be, you know, uh, uh, starting with the session with the panel introduction. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, the panelists for taking out the time uh, and, uh, you know, uh, giving us the right input and, uh, you know, steering towards the topic. Secondly, um, of course, the Birla College uh, from Kalyan, I mean, uh, they have been instrumental in, you know, promoting and, uh, you know, supporting us for this uh, activity. So uh, we have uh, Asmita Gupta, ma'am. Uh, she is vice principal and uh, she'll be talking, uh, you know, a, a brief note on uh, the college and uh, the initiatives that the college is doing and, uh, you know, uh, uh, taking forth uh, towards uh, Asmita, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. I'll start with uh, our Honorable Director, Sir, Dr. Naresh Chandra, Principal, Dr. Avinash Patil, respected speakers for the session, and my dear delegates. I, Asmita Gupta, Vice Principal, welcome you all for today's webinar on automation, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, life post lockdown, hosted by BK Birla College of Arts, Science, and Commerce, Kalyan, 
in association with White Oak App Interactive and Zinc courses. As we all know, artificial intelligence and machine learning are changing the world today. The impact of these technologies is as dramatic as revolutionary. As per the experts, COVID-19 will pose new challenges in the business environment and will substantially affect education sector as well as career sector. E-commerce, e-learning, machine learning, artificial intelligence, process automation, and self-service capabilities will exhibit spectacular growth in today's environment. Automation will be the road ahead to help overcome these challenges which are posed by COVID-19. I hereby welcome you all again to gain insights on the life post lockdown. Thank you very much. Now I ask, uh, continue with Suyo and to just give a brief description about our speakers today so that we can start our session. Thank you. Well, thank you, Smitha, ma'am. In terms of today's uh, presenters, uh, we have on board today two eminent personalities uh, from the Indian Institute of Technology. Uh, to begin with, we have uh, Mr. Abhay Bhargava, who has uh, from Indian Institute of Technology, Kanpur. And uh, I can say a career graph of exceeding 50 years, uh, right from the days of uh, Dhirubhai Ambani ji and Tata's and uh, you know uh, Hindujas. Uh, then we are talking about uh, a consulting arm of uh, you know from a technology or uh, SMEs. He has been extremely in, uh, you know instrumental in guiding and steering uh, individuals to group of companies to uh, technology business and uh, how they can. Uh, take advantage of uh, the uh, various technical uh, knowledge that they have from agro to technology to engineering. Uh, uh, this is Abhay Bhargava. The second uh, enlightened person we have is uh, Rajiva Vachane. He he is of course again IIT alumni, uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Bombay. Uh, Rajiva ji has been uh, mentoring lot of uh, I mean uh, students for Python. I mean just imagine a person who has you know uh, 50 years of experience in in this COVID-19 era. He has been extremely uh, engrossed in a uh, lot of research activities. He has been uh, you know consulting many uh, government and private institutions. This is all about uh, you know uh, some sprinkles of what uh, this gentleman have been doing and they have done. So I take uh, this uh, session towards uh, the first step. I might say uh, journey to this first step. I uh, request uh, Rajiva ji to uh, take this baton and uh, lead us to the lightning and uh, uh, guide us uh, for this, uh, this session. And uh, I'm sure uh, we'd be benefited with uh, his immense knowledge. Over to Rajiva ji. Thank you, Shivam ji. Thank you very much for the introduction, overstated as it is. Anyways, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We are going to be talking about the general aspects of electric vehicles. We have heard from GoGo A1 about the technology part, but let us take a general overview on what electrical vehicles can do, what can be done on them, and how can they be useful to you. Firstly, the concept of electric vehicle is not a very new one as it seems today. Old time electrical lifts, old time aeroplane towers were all heavily battery operated. So we did have battery vehicles. The point is there was no need in the old days or there was no recognized need in the old days to go in for a personalized electrical vehicle. Industrial electrical vehicles were okay. Nobody even thought about personalized electric vehicles. It is only when the cost of fuel is going up, the pollution problem is rising up, that people started thinking of alternative, alternative modes of transport. And the easiest thing which came to mind was electric vehicles. Other alternatives like hydrogen cells, etc. are still under development. They are more difficult to make. The easiest thing is to put a motor on a vehicle and run it with electricity. Having said that, it is not as simple as that. Okay. So, to get to the correct configuration of your design, the correct 
configuration of what a product you want to make one has to go a little deeper into what you must do what you must not do what is the philosophy of design and electric so let us analyze electric vehicles in two scenarios one is the rural the other is the problem in the rural scenario it might be so much of a problem the pollution problem is very severe in urban areas however in urban areas charging a battery in a city like mumbai is a real problem what are you going to do take the vehicle up to your flat or bring the meter down electrical connection down to the ground floor what are you going to do so that is a problem number one in rural that may not be so much of a problem but the problem is electricity may be there may not be there when you need it so this is one aspect of it charging whenever we talk about batteries we cannot separate the charging aspect from a battery so the way to charge a battery basically is through electrical connections electricity supplied or through natural resources like solar panels windmills etc it all depends on where you are located and how you are equipped having said that the type of battery is also very important basically batteries you have is lead acid battery or nowadays a lithium ion battery in lithium ion batteries you have about 6 7 varieties for each variety for example lithium cobalt oxide or lithium ion phosphate or lithium titanate or lithium polymer the costs are totally different the charging times are different the capacities are different so one should be able to choose the best suited battery for your application you have to keep in mind the cost of the battery the charging time and the capacity of the battery the capacity of the battery is given in a figure which is called ah that means you can draw so many amperes for one hour okay that gives you the capacity of the energy which is stored in a battery right so that is the technical aspect of the battery however there are other aspects how will you how will you fix the battery to your vehicle is the battery detachable from your vehicle easily so that only the battery can be taken up to his house for charging just some thought application in this field what lead to some great results the second part of it is the motor the motors basically are hub motors because most convenient don't require a chain attachment you don't require anything however is that the optimum motor which you are requiring for your vehicle there are there are examples of vehicles which are run by non hub motors there are bicycles which run on non hub motors commercially available so we have to see what sort of a motor is to be used secondly is the power of the motor how you can decide on how much watts the motor should be the wattage that is something which is depending totally on the vehicle weight and the load it is supposed to carry there is another parameter which can be used to determine the wattage of the motor you see you require maximum torque when you want to start the vehicle 
so if it is a two wheeler and you can and you can pedal start your vehicle then the battery what the motor wattage will be less please remember the more your technical requirement the more the cost the more the cost you are rising higher up in the marketing pyramid and your customers customer base is going to be very very less so these are some of the things which can be thought of vis a vis electrical vehicles the aspects of artificial intelligence in electrical vehicles should not be undermined you can do a lot of artificial intelligence work like optimizing the power output of a motor to extend battery life you can also use artificial intelligence to feed back the power back into the battery like a regenerative system you can put many more artificial intelligence devices it is only left to your imagination i hope what i have spoken will be of some use to you in the future thank you very much Ajivan ji, it was really uh, uh, exciting to know a lot of uh, you know uh, intricacies of uh, how an electrical vehicle is actually built and uh, you know uh, in terms of the battery or in terms of. But I'm sure uh, uh, much to the facts, uh, like normal uh, normal day life questions. Uh, uh, will it run in yeah. uh, appeal uh, uh, scenario? How's how about monsoon monsoon related uh, you know breakdowns or uh, i might not be in that field but uh, from that field but uh, by and large there have been uh, talks that uh, for instance is uh, reva as a brand where the four wheeler uh, is is an electrical vehicle and it it is uh, you know uh, station uh, you know it's a breakdown so is it that uh, a mechanic actually walks in or there is a remote activity to you know uh, diagnose and uh, correct uh, what what is wrong with the vehicle Now say in an electric vehicle, the number of parts which are replacing the engine are much fewer. Mm -hmm. Okay, maybe the parts which are transmission and and braking and things like that are the same. But but the basic instead of the engine, which consists of many many hundred parts, the parts are fewer. Mm -hmm. So repairing an electric vehicle. you just have to check much fewer components like the battery the wiring and the motor i mean what else can you check right right yeah. so much easier to or maybe the motor driver circuit okay three or four components is what you can check there is nothing else check real okay so the repair is more direct you know what i mean yeah and the inventory required for repair is much less right right so the repair should be faster and simpler for an electric vehicle if the mechanic is little qualified absolutely or well trained or well trained yes so coming to uh, you know the second uh, phase of this session uh, where uh, ask uh, we have to you know uh, start with his uh, uh, discussion on uh, the covid effect and uh, the stress that uh, we all are facing in terms of uh, the everyday life and the transportation that is what we would look forward to over to abhay bhaiya thank you sayok now what we would like to see you have heard uh, mr shinde and mr uh, rajiva talking about uh, the covid uh, the electric vehicle and all that uh, but we need to understand that covid is here it has dist- disturbed our life but at the same time the life should go on it can't stop yes we are under the stresses at the national level corporate level individual level our livelihood people of the migratory people have uh, badly damaged so there are stresses i mean no doubt there are financial stresses that we have been locked down 
maybe the loss is about 3 lakh crore or 4 lakh crore i don't know the economists have to define that what is the loss uh, for the lockdown the major stress is the travel stress that we are not able to travel to the places which we have been used to whether it is office or it, it is going to the mall or it is going for the wedding or it is meeting the people i mean that kind of a travel uh, system which we had for the last 40 50 years it's totally disturbed i mean we do, just don't know how will we travel tomorrow whether I can trust a public vehicle, can I travel in a train or can I travel in a plane? So everything is disturbed. Then we have a tremendous HR stress. An HR stress in the sense that, uh, I mean, everybody is talking about work from home. It's fine, looks fine. But imagine a person who has to work from home. I mean, he doesn't know what or she doesn't know how to, how to change her behavior while working from home, she has been used to or he has been used to working from the offices and uh, go to the office, come back to home. But today, that there is a tremendous HR stress. The Birla College teachers know, the students know, there is a tremendous stress how to teach. There is a tremendous uh, loss of employment for the migratory worker. I mean, we don't know how we will behave. I mean, yesterday I was discussing with a SME company. He, they want to do some uh, project for the UV torch and suddenly they gave me a figure of uh, 100 people being employed. I said, how can you do it? How can I accept 100 people in a post-COVID kind of a scenario? I mean, you need to change your processes. I mean, you need to define that which are the critical areas which you need, which are the non-critical areas you need. So... Uh, there is a total disruption. Today, I would say that most of the people do not know how to manage HR post-COVID. So these are the two, uh, these are the stresses which we are seeing that which is coming because of restriction on public traveling using public transport. The second distress is because of the virtual technologies available with the data for the shopping, meetings, work from home, etc. Next slide. Now, if every calamity or every disturbance or disruption uh, brings its own opportunities. I mean, that's what we were trained in Reliance as how to manage the opportunities, how to identify the opportunities. I mean, we used to say there is no dissection. Yesterday is yesterday. I mean, we used to say Sehwag had made a century yesterday. Today, it's different. I mean, today, it's a new game. You need to play today's game rather than keep talking about it. this should could have happened and this would have happened. Nothing of that sort. We have to see what is today and how do we behave so that tomorrow we can be the winner. So because of this COVID, we have a tremendous opportunity being opened up in the healthcare and it's remote delivery. I mean, when we are saying remote delivery, it uh, creates a lot of opportunities for the EV industries because there could be a system wherein we can still uh, deliver healthcare through, through the using the electric vehicles and still doing the remote de delivery. Food and its home delivery, everybody knows Bombay was pioneer in home delivery in India. did not know how to get the home delivery, but today the whole, uh, I mean, uh, India is talking about home delivery. So that is creating a, a new set of opportunities for the home delivery. Obviously, they will new, use the electric vehicles or any kind of vehicles for the home delivery. So it, there is going to be a bombardment of our for the vehicle uh, deployment or its utilization for the home delivery system. MSME. I mean, imagine that the people cannot run the factory with the regular uh, workforce. What is the outcome? Outsource. Outsource to whom? MSME. You will have to have your production system geared up in such a manner that you will work with the smaller teams distributed areas, not an integrated area, not centralized, decentralized. I mean, the, the, the famous example is Maruti. Earlier, they used to manufacture everything. And uh, now nowadays, Maruti doesn't uh, manufacture much of the things except assembly and maybe paint shop and the marketing. So how will the main industry take care of the distribution of the their various operations? I mean, we presume that most of the outsourcing in terms of manufacturing, in terms of sub-assembly, parts, everything, those are the things which will go to MSME. If our MSME is geared up, they would be able to take a maximum benefit out of it. 
the the next point is the financial innovations i mean the, the whole industry the whole company the whole corporate structure the company they are under financial distress the salaries have been not paid the production has not happened so payments have not been made now we need lot of financial innovation to come into how to restructure our the companies how to uh, innovate to come out with a new solution new paradigms new algorithms to handle the situation uh, as i mentioned uh, uh, hr hello uh, yeah Yeah, yeah, just uh, you know, random uh, thinking aloud. Uh, uh, when we talk about MSME, we like to mention about uh, uh, the gaps that we have uh, from monitoring, running, and uh, you know, taking uh, it to the other uh, aspect. Now, uh, bridging the gap from our academician and the industry. Now, sitting as a pivotal uh, point. uh should we not have some kind of a simulation because earlier simulation were confined to only let's say uh a vehicle that is uh, running on a uh, on a on a river for instance uh, a, a car which is flying uh, or a, or a train if i don't if i don't uh, ride the train i can simulate it and uh, you know drive that uh, particular uh, engine here uh, when we talk about smes and the students for instance if a last uh, it's a you know i'll take an example of a commerce student where uh, he or she is learning let's say uh, uh, balance sheets now if we kind of simulate them a uh, real time case study of say delice industries of their uh, particular segment which is already published and then this simulation can steer that student to uh, take decisions and arrive at certain uh, facts and then create some kind of an algorithm and then this can be put into the machine learning thing uh, of course i'm not uh, from the industry but it's a, Uh, you know uh, we can talk about that uh, uh, maybe this gap of uh, the students coming into the industry because when we take interviews they say this was not in the syllabus they say uh, we just have uh, done the certification now i am here to take experience now where will the experience come unless and until they have not worked for any uh, on a uh, strong front yeah say if if you talk about a uh, uh, simulation uh, we started uh, way back in 1983 in which uh, say in reliance we were set, setting up the petrochemical plants and we had no manpower who could run that so we asked uh, our technical collaborator uh, uop which is universal oil products and uh, they said yes we can provide you a simulator and it'll cost you about 5 crore rupees in in 1983 hell of a lot of money so mukesh bhai came and says uh, i mean uh, can we do it ourselves and uh, being what we are coming from iit we said yes we can do it we have been using the computers uh, i mean since ages and i mean at that point of time iit was everybody every student used to love how to do simulation and i mean i had also done some kind of simulation of distillation column so we started doing it and within a cost of about a crore or rupees we could develop our simulators so simulator is uh, i mean i will say more like you can use it for any kind of thing i mean which you can't uh, put it in practical i mean you can simulate or try to create a game out of it and then put it for the people to use it i mean here what i'm saying msme is we can we can teach them not only teach them i mean uh, support them through our simulation models and say if you can't do it i'll come back and tell you how to do it so that is uh, what we expect uh, that to happen and uh, simulation is here i mean once once uh, indians have started playing uh, video games and all those things they basically they are simulated games so that is uh, this thing as far as your question is concerned learning i mean i am saying with this um, covid effect and uh, distance learning and everything learning is here i mean teaching is one part you can do a syllabus you can do a uh, not as something uh, which is syllabus so you can learn anything i mean what i i was reading uh, about a half an hour back that there is there is 600% growth in home learning so home learning is here people who want to learn want to deviate they want to say this is my hobby or this is what my interest is they should be able to learn and there will be enough people to to teach them or make them learn so that is what we are saying there are there are a lot of opportunities as far as training learning innovations how to teach how to train them sitting at home it could be uh, like you mentioned the the commerce 
problems uh, to sort it out or it could be accounting problems to sort it out or it could be a simple uh, mechanic who can be trained to to rectify the or repair the vehicle or it could be i mean pump repair and uh, all kinds of things uh, are here to be learned courtesy covid crisis otherwise we could have shifted it to maybe next 5 years that okay we can we can still find a teacher who can teach us we are still indians we do we are very bad in do it yourself i mean we yeah. we want somebody else to come in and teach us or does thing even if it is a carpentry or even if putting a nail in the wall we will call a mystery and he has to do it i mean we don't want to do it and not, most of the people will not even have a hammer or a drill at home to yeah. do all those things which you will find in practically every foreign houses they have this minimum this thing so we are not a diy we we tend to look up to somebody i mean i would say i mean we don't uh, follow jugad in, in 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 getting these things done we want the professionals who can do this job call them i mean they are cheap they are available every nook and corner so use them to do our job can But we I, go to the next slide or I, if, I, if there is a question that Yeah, no, not a question, but interesting point when you said jugar because earlier uh, jugar was uh, essentially done or been uh, you know it traveled from a very uh, mechanical point for instance artisans. So these people were essentially doing all sorts of jugars. But uh, some uh, you know uh, white papers that you had uh, you know uh, shared uh, with uh, I think uh, Professor Munshi where uh, there was a presentation with uh, all sorts of engineering. Uh, outcomes based on the jugad so uh, this uh, marriage is really uh, interesting to know uh, in terms of uh, how engineering is viewed as uh, jugad as well in india yes or in terms of innovativeness so, so every innovation starts with a jugad mm -hmm. or i would say every innovation starts with a necessity now the, if there is a necessity i mean the person who is facing the problem he does some kind of a jugal try to solve it if he can't solve it he approaches some kind of engineers whoever is around or whoever is the expert around so the jugal is taken to the next stage if the jugal has a better solution value and a commercial value then it is converted into kind of a no innovation with professionalization with a designing and everything so those uh, come into so that is what the jugal is now coming back to uh, taking our electric vehicle in this kind of a scenario i mean i would like to say that i would like to divide uh, the period from now on to two two kind of distinct segments one is the period from now till vaccine is found and people are vaccinated that's one phase which is uh, maybe we can call it a open up phase 1 i mean we will be partially opened up uh, to do some things we we may be restricted to many things or we may not like to do certain things so that is the period which we need to see that this is a till vaccine is found that is a period uh, which we have uh, as a time scenario in front of us the second is post vaccination i mean we presume that post vaccination the life in india will be back to what it used to be we would love to travel uh, attend weddings uh, attend ganpati festival go to siddhivinayak temple or uh, go to tirupati so all those mixing um, shouting crowd i mean uh, political rallies with the clapping here i mean nobody can clap or nobody can laugh if i make a joke but we we are you more used to that kind of a uh, facing our audience that will come back once the vaccine is here and we we are able to do that so in order to design our projects we need to keep these two scenarios in mind that this is a short term maybe 2023 i would like to put it uh, by that time we will have uh, practically everybody vaccinated and post 2023 we should be looking for uh, the the scenario in which uh, we the life can come back to the normal scenario in that life there could be some changes we could used to something like we have deleted the landline together today all together we started uh, mobile in a very hesitant way keeping both the mobile and the landline together but today landline is deleted so in the two years we may delete many things they may not come back but most of the things which are closer to the hearts of indians they will remain they will come back to the normalcy and uh, 
uh, we hope to see those kinds of things there but uh, some of the things like remote healthcare or uh, remote learning uh, may be here even after the post uh, vaccine is introduced so once we do this can we can we see the next slide what are the projects in the electric vehicle industry we can identify uh, to take uh, this uh, session uh, further we are saying electric cycles for personal transport is one of the best options even today and even post vaccine i mean it is not going to trust a uh, public transport what do we do do we walk how much can we walk if we can't walk then we need to have a personal transport and that pers personal transport has to be for a shorter period not a long so maybe we can we can request mr shinde to auction uh, some of the dead stocks of uh, electric cycles which we have and maybe uh, so you can do the auction so that people can get affected uh, can uh, take the advantage of this uh, electric cycle opportunity and the demand we expect may continue because there is a health consciousness uh, people once switch over to electric cycles may keep on doing it as uh, people are using overseas the cycle so that looks a very 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 doable project i mean very viable project and uh, i mean with mr shinde we have done all the lot of work so yog is very well aware of that uh, so anybody who wants to set up a unit for electric cycle uh, is on a very good job i mean uh, he should be able to or she should be able to do good job to to get into this line the second project which we can identify is the cargo vehicles in the category of 100 kg to 700 kg payload i mean as we have seen uh, uh, mr rajiva knows with professor munshi there is no vehicle cargo vehicle official vehicle with a ye yellow number plate in this category we are moving cargo we are misusing the personal transport vehicles uh, with all this swiggy and uh, zomato uh, delivering the food this is all unauthorized uh, but uh, it's there i mean every jugad starts uh, from the, these kinds of things so we will call it a jugad but there is a tremendous opportunity to to set to manufacture a design vehicles which can take 100 kg to 700 kg payload it could be a two wheeler it could be a cycle electric cycle it could be a three wheeler i mean all those kinds of possibilities exist mr rajiva is there mr shinde is there who can design those vehicles but uh, that looks a very doable kind of project because that uh, there is a gap in that i mean nobody is providing that kind of a vehicle today and we have a lot of opportunities as far as the first mile and last mile i mean we know that the milk has to be collected in india it's kind of an amul scenario from every home I mean, we we don't produce we have we don't have a large cattle farms we have the cattle farms where there are one cow two cows so the milk is collected 1 liter 2 liter so so today motorcycles or even uh, females walk uh, and uh, deliver the milk so there is a last first mile I mean, many of the agri products like vegetables and everything has to be collected from the farm to at least the highway there is no vehicle so there is a lot of opportunity even today without covid for the first mile and same with the last mile I mean, today it has become much more serious that because everything has to be delivered to the home people cannot go to the market they can't crowd so there are i mean i would say 10 10 times increase as far as the the last mile uh, delivery is concerned and uh, it has to be electric vehicles if we have to use uh, any vehicle i mean we should remember that the two wheeler which is being used which is an ic engine driven is only has the license for personalized uh, travel not for the the commercial travel. so it is a illegal activity it is going on but maybe uh, government can put uh, impose a ban that no no this thing uh, personal vehicle can be used for the cargo transportation then the obvious choice because electric vehicle electric vehicle there has no restriction that they can't be used for so they they are all, already licensed to move cargo as far as this is concerned the next of possibility is remote management assembly unit so, many times we assume that if the fresh entrepreneurs are setting up the units they need to be guided for hand -holding. so people like mr shinde mr rajiva or 
all all the other experts will be required to guide them that don't worry about it we are there to support you from the back end nothing will go wrong you can go ahead and set up the project you do the core part you do the assembly part you do the physical part as far as all the other parts are concerned we can remotely manage it and take care of this so that could be another kind of opportunity uh, which is available virtual showrooms people will not go to the main showrooms i mean those big showrooms of the car i mean they they look like a history 15 i mean people will not be trusting to visit to those places there won't be any mechanism or transport available to visit to those showrooms so what do we do so there is a possibility or opportunity for the virtual showrooms for the vehicle electric and electrical vehicle will naturally become the virtual showroom you can uh, visit the showroom and there are person like uh, mr shinde who can uh, rip apart uh, the vehicle and show you every part and do how it is being assembled which is not possible in a physical form but here in the virtual showroom it's possible to to go to the each and every detail of the vehicle and i mean whatever the query the person may have i mean we have the expertise we have the system to to pass on the information or i mean normally i call the promotion because I mean, information is is a promotion the customer whatever they want to know so that yeah. is going to be there bldc motor everybody talks about bldc motor we still don't manufacture these bldc motors in india professor hinde makes uh, those bldc motors in china and i have been asking him why don't you make set up the unit in bldc motor maybe he had resisted all along but today is the time that uh, he or somebody else will come and uh, set up the unit for manufacturing bldc units in the various range Let me go to the next slide auto component manufacture today mr rajiva mr shinde will vouch that practically 80% of our electric vehicle is chinese it's going to be this we have to make our own components we have to do all those things so there is a tremendous opportunities to make and these are small sizes so no big person will come into manufacture those so it will naturally be directed toward msme to do these things food delivery services using ev i mean i mentioned that yes it's a, it's a big uh, this thing there are certain restrictions being imposed by uh, government uh, for the funding of these food delivery services i hope we have taken up with the the concerned msme ministry hope they can agree to and uh, remove those in hindrances so that there could be boom in uh, food delivery services i mean imagine 1 lakh rupee one employment so if you have 1 crore vehicle being deployed uh, for this thing you can generate a deployment of 1 crore uh, people who just know how to drive so it's possible it's within our reach it is only a limited uh, po- policy constraint which we have if it, that is removed and it's very simple i mean, I mean even females uh, can uh, take up this that doing the food delivery i mean i have been saying that why dabawala is only 100% male why why i don't see female doing and uh, what is so so rocket science in food delivery that only male can do it if we have the electric vehicle and if we have the policy to support my assumption is the 50% of that market will go to the females who who just know how to drive and they have the time to do the food delivery I mean, it is not that they are cutting the house uh, the home uh, services this special vehicles like fish cart uh, which i love bhel gadi that i mean bhel is being sold on the on, uh, road side i would love to see that the bhel is sold through an electric modern vehicle which has all the systems and upgrading the bhel wala to a to a better this thing more hygienic fast food vehicles those are the services which are very much uh, possible and uh, can be done two wheelers for mobile nurses i mean this is one of the innovation which is uh, post covid which we expect to boom that people will not be able to visit to the clinic doctor will not have the space or the uh, permissions for the people to wait for 2 hours 3 hours 50 people assembling for, for their turn to come so it here it is that then there will there could be nurses who will travel use the electric vehicle go to your home they have the necessary gadgets or devices to take uh, the data required data collect the data put it onto the cl- cloud the doctor uh, visualizes or sees a diagnosis and, and then prescribes you the medicine but the main crux is nurses mobile nurses i mean 
other places it is difficult to execute this kind of thing but in india we have the nurses we have if you have the ev uh, vehicles to to carry them to move them around uh, this is very much possible and uh, we see that it should come in two seater electric three wheel i mean uh, which i have been proposing that i mean mr rajiv may not agree but uh, we have been saying that uh, why why th three wheeler is a three seater I mean, many times I have seen. I'm I'm ready to say that let's do a survey, and you will find that 80% of the time the 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 auto is not full. I mean, it is either one percent or two percent. We are unnecessarily wasting our resources, uh, the road weights and everything for for a third percent to be accommodated. And now there is a social distancing, so the government may come out that in three wheelers, not not more than two persons can sit behind. So there is a good opportunity to develop a two seater electric three wheeler, which because uh, once we do two 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 seater electric three wheeler my my payload reduces so my chances of uh, using a less powerful motor or uh, doing uh, lower down specification increases my cost reduces and it could make a lot of sense to do that charging stations everybody has been talking about i i'm not an expert but uh, that that's a necessity which we can do so there are lots of projects opportunities available there are lot lots of government incentives available we are here we have the team we have done in the past and if anybody wants to come up and say look this is a project we want to do i think today we have practically everything under our control that we have the technology with us we have uh, the the government scheme with us we know how to get it funded how to handle them how to uh, support them through the the remote management so there is a practically everything uh, on our platform is available if somebody wants to come up and says i want to set up this project can you help me and i'm sure we can say yes we can do it. thank you Mr. Abhay, this was uh, a journey uh, we would say uh, in terms of the transition, uh, in terms of opportunities and uh, the bridge, the gap that uh, we need to or we are kind of bridging uh, in terms of uh, you know bringing. Uh, I'm sure uh, the attendees uh, would agree that uh, they may not have thought that electrical vehicles uh, are so much in. Uh, not only in demand but the need of the uh, you know are and uh, they would be able to you know uh, decide in terms of uh, the future uh, industry that they might uh, you know, take on uh, uh, well i believe uh, we will have uh, certain uh, uh, question answers questions concerns and pointers that uh, the attendees might uh, have uh, you know uh, their mind so uh, Uh, instead of an open session uh, because of the time constraints i would request uh, every attendee to jot down uh, what they feel what they have uh, uh, in terms of questions uh, to the expert panels and uh, we'll try to assemble them and uh, you know come back uh, on an individual or uh, and an open platform uh, you have the chat uh, you know in front of you uh, i uh, encourage everybody to uh, some their uh, questions uh, on the chat Uh, we would be more than happy to uh, comment and answer back uh, with the expert panel that we have uh, uh, with us today and uh, again uh, not only in terms of the questions uh, but also in terms of the projects or ideas uh, in terms of innovation or you have certain thing in your mind we have the resources and uh, the uh, you know uh, experts with us who would guide uh, and steer uh, towards the completion so now uh, feel free to write back and uh, i uh, take uh, this further uh, uh, point uh, in terms of uh, this session towards uh, you know uh, near completion uh, so yeah, can i add something yeah please please okay. my request to all attendees is that please do not take it as a holiday i mean that's what i have been doing for last 21 days requesting all the people i know that it's not a holiday it is time to work out our future plans there are tremendous opportunities and that's what we have seen in many cases the people were sitting idle and saying and today they are over busy so my request to all attendees is it's a golden time that you have the time you have the capacity things that what do you need to do for tomorrow what you need you what you can achieve if you can come out with your questions people like us have all the time to answer your questions so this is the best time for you to plan i mean i mean i can't imagine that india ever had this kind of a uh, 
free period that everybody is available uh, to to address to your queries i mean these days uh, i mean i am surprised that if i made a call or i have made a i mean uh, email the response is coming maybe same day i mean uh, we have been uh, dealing with the, uh, organization like brc they never used to respond and today they are trying to chase us so it's a golden period utilize your time utilize uh, the time available with the people and do something don't sit and say that yeah, this is holiday and tomorrow the lockdown is over and everything is going to be back to the same thing okay absolutely very well said and uh, this is really mm -hmm. uh, a very important point uh, for everybody else uh, first that we feel that uh, there is a lot of time that we have done uh, we have done uh, we are sitting in home now let's have a walk let's meet our friends so this is not the right phase and uh, let us stay home and uh, be safe uh, well uh, uh, as i said i'll repeat that uh, you might uh, shoot uh, feel free to shoot uh, your questions and uh, uh, any projects or ideas that you have in mind and we'd be more than happy to comment on